In this video, I'm going to walk through the steps on how to install a custom ROM. Um, each ROM has specific requirements and specific um, instructions, so make sure you follow the instructions on the ROM or else your phone can be stuck in a boot loop. Um, as always, if anything goes wrong, just use the flash tool and flash your phone back uh, to stock again. Um, so to start off, the most important thing is to determine which ROM you, you want to use. So go visit the thread, and uh, once you've selected a ROM, the important thing to note is which, is which baseband it uses. Uh, this is the radio, and there's two uh, groups. There's the 2.0 and the 2.1. Uh, once you've determined that, go into the flash tool and just flash the basic stock uh, 2.1 ROM, either the 2.0 or the 2.1, and that's how you're going to start off. Because once you flash that, you can change the, the baseband to what your requirements are. For example, on this phone right now, I flashed the 504 and it's baseband 46. So if I wanted to use a custom ROM that needed a different baseband, I would have to flash a different baseband onto the phone. So just as an example, I'm going to flash Tripp's latest ROM, his most stable 2.2 uh, ROM. And this ROM requires baseband uh, 61. So if you go into the baseband collection, again all the links are in the description, there's two groups of basebands, the 2.0s and the 2.1. So to start off, I'm going to use the flash tool and flash a 435, the 435 ROM because it's a 2.1 and then after that I'm going to flash the baseband 61 patch. So that's how you determine which baseband you're going to use and which ROM to flash to start off. Um, for more advanced users, you can flash this patch, which allows you to um, alternate. So if you have a 2.0 baseband, you can flash the patch and change it to a 2.1. Uh, but if you know how to use patches, you probably don't need this video. So just to start off, I'm going to flash the phone to uh, 435. And I'll be right back. So now it's finished flashing, and I'm just going to start up and uh, show you the firmware and baseband version. So I just flashed it to 435 and it's baseband 54. So now that the, uh, the phone's been flashed, the next part is to flash the uh, baseband for the phone. So on TRIPS firmware, it requires baseband uh, 61 or higher. So go to the baseband. Um, you can either download it directly from TRIP or you can download it from the baseband collection website. So 61 again is a 2.1 and there it is. So some of the basebands will include the flash tool. Uh, if it doesn't and it's an FTF file, copy the FTF file into the flash tool into the firmware folder and um, once you put it in there it'll show, show up when you click on flash. So I'm just going to use uh, TRIPS version of uh, 61. So flash. And flash. Firmware. OK. So as you can see before, the phone's firmware is baseband 54. And once we flash it, it'll be 61. And we'll be right back once this phone finishes flashing. So flashing is now complete. Uh, flashing the baseband is really quick and as you can see from the timestamps it takes uh, just about a minute. So now I'm just going to unplug the phone and start it up. And the phone just restarted. Go to about phone and as you can see the baseband is now 61. So the next step, uh, if required, some firmwares 
require you to flash the dual touch driver separately. So go to the flash tool website and it's right down here at the bottom uh, binaries dual touch. So just download the FTF file copy it and put it inside the firmwares folder of the flash tool and flash it. So the next step now is to uh, root the phone. So once you've started up the phone the next thing you're going to do is uh, root it. So visit the uh, super one click thread and download the latest version of super one click. It'll root any uh, 2.1 phone. I'm just going to run super one click as administrator as always and click on root on the phone you have to have unknown sources checked and USB debugging checked under development once that's done connect your phone and rooting will start so super one click will pick up the phone and it's going to try to detect the version, just say yes and it'll root the phone uh, if you do get a message that pops up, make sure you click on uh, charge phone so it's going to keep booting and once it finishes uh, don't install BusyBox using Super One Click because I found that it doesn't always work. Install it directly from the market. So click no. And it's been installed. Test. And your phone has been rooted. So the key thing after this, once your phone has been rooted, you must reboot the phone. So we'll be back once uh, the phone's been restarted. Once the phone has been rooted, the next step is to install um, Astro or any other file manager just so you can browse files and as well to install BusyBox. Uh, BusyBox is required for X recovery which is used to flash zip files and uh, things onto the phone. So install Astro and install BusyBox. Once, you go, once BusyBox is installed, you should have super user because you're rooted, and BusyBox should be appearing in a second. Go into BusyBox and a super user request should pop up if you've been rooted properly and restarted and click on install and that's it so the next part is to download X Recovery. Uh, they've just updated X Recovery to version uh, 1.0 but most of the zip files and most of the ROMs are still using X Recovery uh, 0.3 so download 0.3 once you've downloaded that, download the, the ROM that you want. So it's a zip file. And connect all, uh, copy all these to your phone. So I'm going to copy the X Recovery file, 0 0.3, as well as Chips ROM version 1.5 onto the phone. Once, on, onto your, once you're on the phone, use Astro and navigate to wherever you copy those files and install them. So X Recovery is right there. Install. And 
the ROM I copied into the ROM folder. So next you're going to go into XP Recovery and click install. Again you're going to get a super user request and make sure you allow. All three boxes have to turn into check marks and that means it's uh, installed properly. So now I'm just going to restart the phone and go into XP Recovery. Power off. OK. And I'm going to restart. And when you see the Sony Ericsson logo, start pressing the back button. and now you're in X recovery. Next, go down to install custom zip, choose zip from SD card, and go to the ROM. And click yes, install, and yes. As always, uh, back up your data and uh, if anything goes wrong, like the flashing goes wrong or um, you've messed up the baseband and something happens and you're stuck in a boot loop or at the logo, um, as always, just use the flash tool and flash your phone to restore it. So installation is now complete. Just press back and reboot the phone. Depending on which ROM you installed, uh, the first time usually takes a while to start up just because it has to build all the files. But again, depending on the ROM, it might restart multiple times as it uh, sets everything up. So make sure you read the instructions for each ROM. Um, on Trips ROM, it restarts anywhere from two to four times, and then it'll uh, go load up into this into the firmware. and Trips ROM has uh, finished installing. Let's go through setup and skip or sign into your Google account. Um, some ROMs automatically detect your access point so you get uh, data immediately. Some, some ROMs you might have to go in and enter it manually, all your APN settings. Uh, if you load up your ROM and you don't get a radio Sometimes you, uh, certain ROMs will have utilities and you'll be able to go into the dev tools and bad behavior and crash the system server. But again, this depends on your ROM, so make sure you read the instructions. And uh, that's how you install a custom ROM. So to uh, recap, you flash your firmware, you flash the baseband, you flash dual touch if required, then you root the phone, install BusyBox, install X Recovery, and then flash the ROM. If anything goes wrong, just use the flash tool and flash back and start over or flash the stock ROM again.